this is the second podcast. The intro's on the other one. You know what we say, and let's just get on with it. We're talking about international rugby on this one. Yep, lovely. Yeah, Can't wait. Six Nations is back. Uh, but firstly, let's just... Um, Almost over, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can talk about the uh, the 36-man England squad, which Steve Borthwick has named following his three-day training camp in Brighton. But let's just pick up on what happened. The, the one, I think, most interesting position. So for that three-day training camp, in Brighton, mm. uh, ironically, where Marcus Smith was playing school rugby when he was yeah. first spotted by former uh, England coach Eddie Jones, um, Marcus Smith was was suggested he should go back and play for his club. He mm. played very well, and George Ford, who's had hardly any club rugby, almost zero, almost for nine as months? close as you can get to zero in nine months, uh, was. Oh, well, had a few days working very closely with Steve Borthwick. What do we read into this? If anything, so I know how it's. I know how it looks. I know how it looks. It looks inconsistent, doesn't it? It's like we're gonna send one guy back because he needs more game time. Meanwhile, we're gonna bring in another guy who's had no game time, and that's gonna be fine. Well, I, well, I guess the question is: Does that mean that the that, do we read into that that the pecking order is now Farrell, Ford, Smith in that order? I would read into it that yeah. I, I think Ford is the guy that he wants. I don't know what the order is precisely, but I think Ford is the guy he wants. And I think the reason he's brought Ford in is because he wants to work with Ford. He's not seen him for a long, long time. And maybe if Ford had been available from the absolute start, all three of them would not be going back. So my my read, I can see that read, but my read is actually slightly different, which is it's a new team, it's a new attack, a new game plan, and a new attacking stru- structure, most importantly... I think it's more to try and bring George Ford up to speed with Nick Evans and everything else that's going on. Because obviously Marcus Smith is the man who is most in tune with what Nick Evans is doing in the whole squad. Um, So he doesn't need to be brought up to speed with that, whereas George Ford does. No comment. You could infer from this that um, George Ford has jumped above, but I don't actually think this is a definitive proof of that because it can be explained via the other, yeah. the, the Nick Evans link better. I'm inclined to agree with you. I, I I would be very surprised if Marcus Smith is not on the bench against France. Same. I'd be incredibly surprised. Same. And uh, I think it'd be useful for George Ford, therefore, to get some game time for, for sale. Although he might be playing 13 with Rob Dupree, the best, <laughs> the best <laughs> yeah, 10 in the course. Premiership, uh, playing 10. Quite. Uh, but it, it's very interesting. They're now the three of them are now in the squad. Finn Smith is no longer in the squad, and um, mm-hmm. George Ford is in in his place. Mm. How do you think this? How do you predict this one's going to shake down over the next? I'm trying to think how many games England have got. Two more in the Six Nations now. About at least three World Cup warm, warm up, up games. games. Yeah, because they don't have a the, summer tour. I don't think they've got a summer tour. No, they don't. It's World Cup warm up instead. So the, basically, the Autumn Nations games have been moved to before the World Cup mm-hmm. as World Cup warm up matches. Um, so England we've well, probably got five games left maybe six yeah how do, you see, how do you see the shake sh- shaking down in that ten position slash ten and midfield position with, with those three individuals what, what do you what do you see What's my, your... my view would be the, and I, I know I said before I wouldn't be surprised to see Ford and Farrell be in the combination I think from where we are the most likely is what we've got I, I think I think Faz Lawrence Slade is probably right now the most likely. I agree with Phil. Uh, yeah, f- uh, I think you just sorry. Ford Farrell saying no. F- f- so what we've got now, so yes, is the most likely. Farrell, Farrell Lawrence Slade. Slade. Yeah, that's what I'd keep. Is the most likely as long as they're fit. Ford on the bench. That's how. I'd, mm. that, that, that's how I'd roll. I, it's I'm, Ford or Farrell. Never Ford and Farrell. Well, I think. I agree with you. I think it will be the three players that are there currently. And and weirdly, I think the majority of the team is, is basically done and picked. And I don't see a lot of change at all no. in any of it between now and the, the first game in the World Cup. Uh, but what I would say is it's not Ford or Farrell. I think it's Ford or Slade. Because oh, I, I'm, Slade. I'm, not saying I, I'm not saying I want Ford, Farrell, but I think... I would not rule out as Phil has never done never ruled out and, and a lot of people look back on it and, and have this real negative thought about it because cause Farrell, uh, Farrell, uh, Smith Farrell didn't really gel and click 
No, it didn't. Mm-hmm. And, and that's because, well, there's for a number of reasons. One, they only had Manu Tuolangi to play outside them. He wasn't the player he was. Or Henry Slade, which kind of feels like three playmakers and isn't quite right. But they, England won a Grand Slam with Ford Farrell to Alangi. They equaled the world record number of wins and got to a World Cup final with Ford Farrell to Alangi. Mm. So Ford Farrell Smith, uh, Ford Farrell Lawrence, sorry, has not, it's not over. And it is a legitimate option that England could have with Ford on the bench. So I think about the Premiership, right? And the Premiership is a great league because everything moves so quickly in coaching. I think that international coaching moves a lot slower than Premiership uh, coaching because of the way you stretch stretch the teams. And I just think maybe the Ford foul because it did you listed some notable successes there. World Cup finals, nothing to sneer at. Um, Grand slams are not easy to get. They're not easy to get, are they? And, and they had the, G- G- they had the GB Cup for GB an Cup extended for a period of time. So I just wonder if like the games moved on from from, from that. You could, Holding on to it would almost be foolish. I, I think that yeah. Lawrence has, out of nowhere, become one of the most important players for England now yeah. because he's because he's a focal point. I can't see anyone going back to. I can't, I can't see why you'd go back to Ford and Farrell. I think it's time. It's had its time, and I don't think you want to see it ever again. Really, but, unless yeah. there's a. You know, a strategic or tactical decision where you need to, you know, deploy it. And I think England have enough options at 13 where you don't need to go there. Um, I will say, I think I, I love Henry Slade. I will say he's probably one of the players, one of the few players in the England team that I've just got a little little question mark above the name of. Not in the squad, but in the starting 15, thinking of the World Cup. I think it's more more than likely he will be the guy, but I think he's one of the people where I'd say I would not be surprised if it was someone else. I love Slade. I think he's great. Yeah, I love him. Um, Left foot as well. I was thinking he's been playing in Social Rugby for a bloody long time now. His his he, debut he was in was, the 2015 World Cup, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, his debut was in Manchester City, I think. Mm. Again, well, in the against Uruguay. Uruguay. Against Uruguay, they decided to, they decided to play him in a festival of rugby when they'd already <laughs> been relegated. <laughs> Miserable. Um, I think that was his date. It was early days, anyway. It's, he was definitely in that World Cup. I'm certain he was in that. He was World in the World Cup, Cup squad. squad. You'd imagine he would have played. He definitely played that, that World game. Cup. Yeah, definitely he did play that game. game. Definitely, he was the goal kicker that day. Um, okay, so here's another one. Uh, so I've got. So it's not. That I've got a question mark about Henry Slade, but it's just when I'm looking at the England team, I think I'm. I think for three games into Steve Borthwick's tenure, it's surprisingly fixed where 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 the team is, like the front row. Basically picks itself. You've got a question: Is it George or Cowan Dickey to mm. start? Mm-hmm. The front five. I think is if Cowan Dickey's fit, he probably starts. The front but... five basically basically is picking itself. Yep. Yeah, unless like, unless Laws is starting. Laws could come into this. There, I I would go with the front five yeah. broadly as long as Cowan Dickey fit. He's in. Other than that, it stays the same. With one caveat that I've I've always quite liked Johnny Hill. Um, I'm a bit surprised he's dropped, but then Johnny Hill played well. He played great today. Um, Chesham is hard to displace in that shirt. Very hard. So, yeah, I don't think. And much if that goes now, there. how good could he be in the future? Exactly. Uh, and how yeah. how good could the younger, bigger version of him be? Oh, imagine, imagine the mutant Weasleys in, yeah. in, the, in the row for England. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think Type Five is fairly nailed on. Yeah. Um, so his second appearance was against Uruguay. That was his first appearance in the tournament. He did. He got his first cap. For England partnering, so in his warm up victory over France in 2015, 15th of August, yep. his first cap in midfield partnering. Sam Burgess, correct. Wow, all roads lead oh, back to I, Sam I'd Burgess. I take that combo now. <laughs> Sam Burgess, that's what I'm going to say. Do you remember Sam Burgess doing? <laughs> Do I remember Sam Burgess? SAS Who Does Wins? No, I've never, I've not seen it, but I, I know he did it in he did so, it in Oz, didn't he? Yeah, there's unless SAS Who Who Does Wins, they always go and break, you know, break people. Like they have the interviews and they find out their lies. And no things. breaking cowhead. Well, the, the, the kind of what I was really disappointed about, right, is that if you get like a baker called Jeff, they'll sit him on this seat in this like dark room and they'll just bark at him until he breaks. They got bloody Sam Burgess and because he's six foot six, an absolute mutant, they start talking about it's like a therapy session. Oh, mate, you're so brave, so, so you know, so good telling us all this stuff. Like, no, your job is to break him. Why are you not breaking him? So uh, yeah, really disappointing. Uh, a really disappointing episode. Do you think they were going to bring out of him the "you're so brave, 
but I don't want to see it. I know he's brave. I, I, I want to see <laughs> force him you, to do bubbling. Yeah, I want. <laughs> yeah, I want you guys to break him. That's the TV. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, type five of England settled. Yeah, back row as we discussed in the previous pod. So many options. Uh, Watch out for Tom Pearson. Too many options. It is. It. it <laughs> It's an embarrassment of riches that leads to indecision and leads to people not people who in many other nations would get fifty to a hundred caps mm. getting five caps or not even that. Yeah, and that's it. Sounds it's, it's it very much is. Oh, my new shoes are too right. My five hundred pound new shoes are too tight, or my the clutch in my Ferrari is really hurting my hamstring. Mm. But it is a genuine problem when you want cohesiveness. It is when you want and, stability. And the only coach to ever really acknowledge this and do something about it was Stuart Lancaster, and he failed miserably. Uh, yeah, he recognised that, but he just didn't have everything else. And, yeah, and he did. He, he confused. I still he solved one problem and made loads of others. Yeah, he. He almost confused correlation and causation. Like, yes, he, he just wanted. Well, if anyone gets, it's, it came across if if anyone gets the requisite number of caps, the magic number of six hundred caps or whatever it is, that team will win the World Cup. Yeah. Rather than saying, you no, know, the it's the best players that've got to get those caps. You don't just pick anyone and stick with them. You've got to get the work out the best. Players and he was so and nearly so right. There. He was no. Re- like, but then he, 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 did, he created such a f- good foundation for the f- team of th- that went on four years later. Yeah. It's amazing what a difference a shirt number can make. Brad Barrett at 13 is so wrong. Brad Barrett at 12, 12. is so right. And yet, didn't do it. Yeah. Didn't do it. And there was the the Haskell um, Rob Shaw where he could only play one, not both of them, wasn't it? Yeah, and again, didn't work. Yeah, but b- play both of them as Eddie Jones did to great success for the first couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, he... Um, had a nightmare. Yeah. Well, wasn't up for it. Did lots of good things, and I'd like to say the redemption arc of Stuart Lancaster is not done yet. I'll tell you where he can never come back to, or never come back. He never, he never was there. What was he? Is the Premiership? He's never anyway. done. He's never coached Premiership. Mm. Did he not? Uh, he, coach he was involved Leeds. at Leeds. He wasn't head coach. Him and Andy Kay. I he was believe. head coach at Leeds in the Championship. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. He's With never Neil back for a period of yeah. time in the Championship. And I'm sure it's back. K and Lancaster. Andy Key. K. Uh, his name's Andy Kay. Key. Key. Andy Key, Key is I it? Think. Anyway, anyway, we're getting that. that so Tim, who, so uh, who would be your back row? Um, or for France for, for the World Cup? This is for Not, the, everyone's available. Everyone's fit. World Cup back row. Um, it would be <laughs> Tom Curry's in there. Yes, hundred percent, definitely. Um, it would be. Mm, so I'm tempted just to just go with the new toys and go Tom Pearson's at Mercer, but uh, yeah, do it. Get the kids in. You've always said Tom Pearson, Tom Pearson, Tom Curry, Zach Mercer. No, I think it would be uh, at the minute Lewis Ludlam, Tom Curry, Zach Mercer. Zach Mercer, you're a big Don Fra- Don Brandt fan. Oh, I am well. a big Don Brandt fan, but the the, the years in France, Zach mm. Mercer's. He's not just a fair weather number eight. I, I'd be happy with Don Brandt as well, potentially. I can't see. I can't pick. I haven't got a clue. I don't know. I don't know. JB World Cup final tomorrow. Who's your back row? Yeah, everyone's is... fit. Curry, Willis, Ludlam. Who plays eight? Ludlam. Don't matter. Anyone? Whoever's available. Ludlam plays eight for his club. Oh, Willis is so good. I'd probably go Curry, Don Brandt, Laws. Don Brandt, Laws is uh, Laws is fine. Don Brandt's mental. Don Brandt, he's on the right path. He, he had a much sure better game against Wales. I think, sure. uh, it, it, okay, it is M- that much Wales easier team. to pick for France this weekend. Who are you picking in your back row for France? Just keep it the same? Yes. Yeah. L- um, Ludlam, Ludlam, Willis, Willis Don, Brandt. Don Brandt. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. And I'd see Earl off the bench or Simmons on. Yeah, there's no reason you don't change yeah. a winning am, team. Am I, yeah. fo- am I foolish to think that Laws not only bench. did England... Did it, but do you know, a couple of stats, like a lot of negativity about England the other week. Like, I just don't get it. That was the... the that was... England's first win in Wales in in the Six Nations in since 2017, mm. five six years, and their biggest win against Wales in Wales since 2003. Mm. Oh, that's nice. And and, Gat- and there was a lot of points left out there. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of points left out there. And Gatland teams, they they very rarely lose by a lot. So I know they, I know they've been hammered in their am two I, games, but am, historically. Am, am I foolish to not only think England are going to compete, but there is a reasonable chance we could sneak a win? Against France? Yeah. 
I I don't think it's that unrealistic. I don't think Where, France are playing particularly well. Home or away? Home. Hey, maybe. I think France. I think France will win. I think they'll. I think they'll probably crush you. <laughs> yeah, I think they'll crush you. Um, thinking about it more. Yeah. So I'm not sure England are going to deal very well with their physicality. That'll be the first thing. Their physicality comes in period. Waves. Yeah, it's not sustained. Like that first twenty minutes against Scotland, their physicality was off the charts. Yeah, and then it just dropped off, and Scotland got the upper hand for big chunks of the game. Hmm, that is true, actually. And there's no Jalonch. He he's been excellent, so he he's gone. He's gone definitely. And they've got there's, so many. There's no Walkie. When they struggled against no Dante, which is big, and no um, Uini Antonio and no Hawass. Yeah, so fa- but Falate is pretty decent. Yeah. Where's Demba Bamba these days? He'll he'll be called up. Mm. So, mm. so I wasn't impressed with France when they struggled against. Who's their first game of the season? Who's the first game of the Italy. season? Italy. Italy. Yeah. Yeah, they had no jackal threat. Like zero jackal threat. Yeah. Whereas England have got tons of jackal threat. So yeah, this is how I'm going to uh, phrase it. You know, if it's just open, uh, open rugby, so, so so to speak, I like France. I think France have got better carriers. I think they're more physical. If it comes down to a breakdown scrap, I think England will wipe the floor with them. So, if you've got Willis, oh, Ludlam and Curry on, on the field, France could be in for a torrid day, because I don't think they have anyone to deal with that. Mm. Uh, their breakdown speed probably isn't quick enough, and when England have the ball, I don't know how they get the ball off them. Well, here, here's one point. Uh, England will not get away with leaving 10 points out, no. on, out on the park. No. So, do we just trust that that Faz's kicking boots are back. And, oh, mm. I would. I mean, this... what's the other option? Who who else? Slit, so, oh, unless sorry. so you either because no one. There's no. I mean, Elliot Daly again. This, this yeah. could be because it could be another reason why Elliot Daly at 13 could be a shout for the World Cup. You know, Cup. I'm, I'm yeah, all, all wing. Or... I'm really heading towards England though. So the other aspect of this game, which I think is going to be massively important, is going to be the kick chase. Yeah, so that's England, where I wanted to go for this. Yeah, if England can nail it, I just think all the things which are wrong with Farrell, which are many and varied. You can't knock his tactical kicking game. Like he knows what he's doing. He can drive a, a team ra- around the field. That combined with Borthwick's detail and knowledge of things like kick chase and the pressure game, the, you know, the more sort of expansive, not expansive, but the more overarching view that he has of his game mean, means I do, I do not think England are going to mess up their, their, their kick chase. Now, the danger is they do have a little... They do get fractured a bit, and I think France's counter running could be devastating. But I don't think England will let them do that. So I think between the breakdown and the, the kicking game, I can, I'm going to put England down for a, a two score win. Wow, what? So the the kicking game is I, that is the key for it, and I, and I think I think we've seen so we've seen both sides of this coin already. Mm. Ireland in the second half, the first half Ireland France was. An incredible half of rugby. It was totally different to the second half where Ireland just pinned France back. France barely got out of there. They got out of their half to have a snatch drop goal. That was it because they were pinned into the corners with this incredibly detailed and varied kicking game that forced France to exit. And as I said last week, uh, 19 out of 20s of, of France's exits will be average or below. It's the it's the twentieth one that is a yeah. worldy ninety five meter try, so you've got to just keep them keep them to nineteen or fewer exits. Scotland did it also really well in the second half. He pinned France back, and we've seen two sides of England's kicking game: the grubber kick game, which was the predominant strategy against Italy, and the more varied game, but a lot of box kicks that they did very well against Wales. So I think you combine those aspects, and if England do that. As well as you're saying, Jay, England could get a lot of territory um, yeah, out, I, out of that. I will just add this. The kicking game that Finn Russell was employing was a very short, not short range, but it was in the French half. It was very tactical. It was mm. to the corners. It was like, uh, Finn Russell can do that because the threat of him with ball in hand keeps you honest and flat in defence and you're sort of not expecting the kick. Mm-hmm. Farrell, yeah, you've got to bring a, a guy up for the yeah. miss two pass to Hugh Jones. Exactly. Well, sorry. Whereas Farrell, I, I, you know, his long range exits and whatnot, 
will be absolutely great. I know he can do the short range kicking thing, but does he have the threat with ball in hand to keep France as honest as Finn Russell does? No, no, uh, it isn't. He doesn't. Well, I think his just distribution is exceptional. He really, really oh, yeah, is. It, it's conventionally excep- uh, exceptional. No, but it's, it's not, not unconventionally exceptional. It was, like Finn Russell. It's different. That's like, that's like going like, yeah, Margot Robbie, she's conventionally beautiful. It, no, it's like, <laughs> look, look, you get a kid, right? Yeah, you you get a kid and you teach him every, every skill. He can kick off both both feet. He can fling, miss, miss twos. He can do all that. He's still not going to be Carlos Spencer. You know, it's the unconventionalness of a Carlos Spencer which makes him a genius. Have Everything you teach that kid to do, Carlos Spencer won't do. He won't look where he's passing. He won't kick with the right foot. He, he won't do anything. Johnny Wilkinson... The things that he, the things that won England a World Cup in two thousand and three, are the things that mm. uh, that, you, that, you, that you're talking about with Owen Farrell. Yeah, that, that is true. That's absolutely true. Stephen I, Stephen Larkham didn't win the didn't win the Rugby World Cup. No, but that, Stephen in two thousand three, did he, he win the Rugby amazing. World Cup in ninety nine? Though maybe he, did, he has won one. Yeah, he's won yeah. one. But he just he was he was. I oh know was it Elton Flatley? I oh know Larkham, no, 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 Larkham was ten in two thousand and three. Flatley was twelve. Yeah. So it's, it's, you've got Farrell against Intermac. You've got um, you've got the two. And, you, Carlos Spencer went out in, in, the, in the quarterfinals. Yes, quite. There's, there's always that. But who would you rather be? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen... Well, just just Spencer's arms. Spencer's um, um, unbelievable. What a specimen. Still this day, he's unbelievable. He is incredible. Have you seen Peyton Spencer? No. 18-year-old son of King wow. Carlos is playing for the um, Sevens team. I'm already, I'm already interested. Mm. Is he good? Yes. Is he? <laughs> yeah, I've I've only seen. I, I don't really follow sevens. I've seen a couple of highlights. I watch when he plays fifteens. I'm not interested in sevens. Worth watching. Really? But, um, New Zealand have got a good track record of bringing boys through sevens into fifteens. They do. Yeah. Like the the uh, Yuani boys. Yep. A couple of good examples. Um. Anyway, so JB two score win for England. Yep. Led by Owen Farrell, of course. Um, Cocker. I mean, I, I think France will edge it, but I'm I'm optimistic that England have got a really good chance to sneak something. I'm going to be at Twickenham th- for this one. Are you? Yeah, oh, I'm looking forward exciting. to this a lot. So, England have got a chance. I think this is going to be such an arm wrestle, just because France. Yeah, I, I think England will. I think England will be in control to a degree. They'll have more territory, more possession, but France are just so. Fiku Peno. Oh. Ramos, they'll, they'll Mof- cut loose Mofana. at some point. Mofana. they'll cut the, loose at some um, point. What's his name? Dumortier. 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 The, o- the... O- Olivon. No Jalonch as well is important, but Cross is pretty good. So yeah, um, and Dupont. Just to yeah, mean, Dupont. Obviously, I've not mentioned mean, Dupont. The, but, the best player in the but, world. But here we go. Right, three games in, and we're all talking. And JB's talking even more positively than you and I feel. We're all talking like England have got a really good chance against France, and Number I think. For the people that have somehow managed to be really negative about this England team, that's got to speak volumes. Mm. We'll see, because England could get absolutely smashed. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I agree. I think we're, I think we're all quite positive about this England team. Not everyone is. And that's a bit disappointing. Well, it's basically because of Owen Farrell. It's give me weird, weird, a weird negativity towards <laughs> Owen Farrell, which I will never understand. But anyway, give me England by three. Last minute. Uh, 45-yard Owen Farrell penalty. Oh, yeah, France by six, but... Oh. Yeah, sorry. Um, so the other games... Yeah. 2.15 on Saturday. Italy host Wales. Oh, the... Wo- this, is it a wooden spoon decider? I think this is going to be a dynamite game. Yeah, I, I agree. Think, I think this is going to be... It's I've got a feeling, so spicy. Sadly, I've got a feeling that Wales will smash them. I don't think Wales will smash them, because Gatlin seems... That, and we really want... I really want... Italy to win this. Yeah. What What would you but do if won't. you were Gatland selection wise? Keep the same team. Would you? Yeah, I think there, so. There's an he's element rotated that rotated so much. He's rotated game. like ten players one game, nine players the next. There's an element here where I'm thinking, kind of damage limitation, telling the story. It might be useful for the team for the World Cup, and also give them a story they can tell. If you just get the kids in for the away game to Italy, <laughs> throw them in the deep end like this, and then you can always say, well, this is about, this, we're thinking about the World Cup. If you put in, like, what you perceive might be the strongest Welsh team with a blend of a few of the new players with some of these decorated legends, and then they go to Italy and lose, what hope? What, like, there's no hope there. Yeah, they won't do that. I think they'll win. I think they'll win handily. But with what team? Do you play the strongest team? 
Do you play a mixed well, bag? Uh, yeah, I don't know. The, the question... Hmm. Well, the two things may not be mutually exclusive. Yeah. Maybe the best team is Jack Morgan and... Well, my thought is... I, I would need to know what is going on in Welsh camp. I'd need to know what the objectives are of Gatlin. Is he just going to carry on rotating, work out what he's got, what, what he hasn't? I suspect he's got a good idea now. I think he goes to Italy and I think he absolutely smashes him. I think the story they want to be telling themselves is we're now going to kick on and win whatever that last game is. What is that last game? France, is it? Uh, Must be. Uh, yeah, because you know, yeah. So, so would you? But, but based on what you've seen, what do you perceive to be Wales' best? Yeah, would kind you go for Owen selection? Williams? Would you go for Grady you know, and Hawkins in the centre? I really liked Grady and Hawkins. I liked Owen Williams. In fact, I didn't think the, the Welsh performance against England was that bad at all. The, um, kick, the kicking was dreadful, mm. and and cohesiveness in attack. Yeah. They, they they got the try from an intercept. They had a few moments where they just ran out of steam and got to. Turned over yeah. deep in England. I can't really remember that game that well, but I, yeah, I think I'd stick. Broadly speaking, with the same back line. Hmm. Interesting that bigger because he's been so key for Wales for so long. You know, the absolute he, focal point. He's yeah. a guy I'd put my faith in, but I understand why he, he wasn't good against Scotland. But he's a guy that I would just back to have a, if you had to hand the yeah. keys to someone. Yeah. But yeah, we, know, I, I, we know we know what he he can do. You know, exactly you can always go back to Dan Bigger. Yeah, so yeah. it's probably a good time to find out. Can, can Owen Williams? Can do Owen it? Williams do anything? Can yeah. Jared Evans do anything? Can any of these lads? Can anyone do anything? Can can can, can, can Reece Pratchell finally be a good fly off? Mm. Nobody knows. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Italy have they got what it takes? They've they've put in. We've had three games. At home, they're beating Australia. Three, they've put in three very handy performances. Yeah. They do look good. I just, but got pretty much nothing out of it. Yeah, they, they do look good. I just feel like we've told this story to ourselves so many times yeah. lately. Oh, they're going to turn in the corner. Oh, they're going to be that good. And they always, always find a way to manage to remind us they are Italy. They are still Italy. Uh, I'm going to go for a Wales win. I mean, Italy do have... They've got one bonus point, which is one more than Wales have. Well... So they are currently above Wales in the table. They've got some handy players. They've got some great players. Negri Canoni, Lamaro's a great back row. Yeah. Fischetti. Oh, it's decent. They're, they may be a prop, a, a tight head away from a really good team. Well, um, and, and a 10. What's his name? Riccioni. Riccioni. Riccioni, yeah, he's all right. The um, Saracen's boy. I, I uh, do like him. Is Ange Cap- 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 Is he out? Is he? I don't know. I don't think he had a knock, didn't he? Um, I don't. I don't think I've just. I, I'm kind of with Jay. I'm kind of they get, okay. They, yeah, Italy are going to come cl- really close this time, but probably still get edged out. That I'm going. For, I'm going to go for a Wales win. Wales win. Mm-hmm. Give me Italy. Oh, In nice. Rome, come on. That, I mean, that would be great for the you know for the for them and for them. But I'm terrible for <laughs> Wales. Great, great for everyone apart from Wales. <laughs> yeah. Gatland will look even. Uh, greyer and more forlorn if that happens. I don't know whether the I don't know when these picture uh, fixtures were selected, but can I just congratulate the organisers of the Six Nations for the for the programming of this weekend as as well as last? It's it's building up every single game because you've got Italy versus Wales, then England versus France, and then on Sunday Scotland v Ireland. Mm. Scotland going for the triple crown, Ireland still with a grand slam. Yeah, Scotland. Oh, I'd love to. If, I'd love it if this game was uh, still a grand slam. Decider. Unfortunately, Scotland messed up against France. But can so the question here is, can Scotland do it? Can they stop the number one team in the world? The, the JB, you'll know. Are, are Ireland the current holders of the JB Cup? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> can they? Can Scotland stop them in Murrayfield? Uh, or, or more to the point, how does how do Scotland stop them? I'll tell you how. Yeah. The time when this season, last couple of years, that Leinster have been disrupted, rolling malls. Get territory, get penalties, rolling malls. That's about it. That's Or you've got to score um, worldy tries like France did in that first half. Mm. Those are your two options. Now, f- actually, Scotland can do those two things. Whether they can do it enough against this island team is another matter. Yes. Um, although, 
there, there, there were a few. There's a talk of a few of the boys being back for Ireland. Sexton Furlong might be back. Um, a few boys still missing though. Hmm. Hmm. Um. I think Scotland can. I don't think Scotland will. Hmm. I. That's kind of where I am. They can do. They definitely, definitely can. This is. I mean, you've just got to think. F- but they might not. Fast forward to the end of September, and this is. Christ, Liverpool beat United seven nil. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Th- this is the interest JB has in international <laughs> <Sorry>. rugby. So <laughs> seven nil. <laughs> seven nil. That's astonishing. <laughs> right. Yeah. So international rugby. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think can Ireland, Ireland look are the, are the previous favourites Scotland are quite good I expect Scotland. if we likened it to okay so this this Scotland v Ireland game is, is, is the equivalent of Lancashire Cup when like Ireland. can Tarleton turn over <laughs> LSH <laughs> um, and I can give, tell you about that give game give you a shot on the title I can tell you about that game tell you about uh, witness going to LSH next week now that's a game <laughs> <laughs> that is a game so Ireland are number one in the world. Yes. Scotland are fifth in the world. So this is like uh, Saracens playing. Who's fifth? Quins. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to win it? Well, it's like Sar- It's like a uh, yeah. Quins travelling to Saracens. Yeah, it's like Quins travelling. No, 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 no. It's like Quins hosting yes, Saracens. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's quite a good analogy. Um, Saracens. <laughs> <laughs> Saracens win that. I think. Uh, I would. So. I'd like to see um, Scotland win because of the. Uh, it makes the final week interesting. If, if Ireland win this, it's it's not a formality. Depend on what happens with the England franchise. I mean, but, but it, 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 it would make for all the people that are going to, going to be in Dublin on next next weekend, Paddy's Day weekend yeah. for a Grand Slam. It, it would. It would it, it, tell you what though. What a weekend that it means, would be! It means Leinster not winning the European Cup if they win this Grand Slam. <laughs> they can't win both. Uh, well, what will happen? is they'll win this Grand Slam and they'll have won it. So far, they've had a fairly easy route through, haven't they? They've not struggled. Well, that France or game. Or they've, they've just played very well. They've, they played very well against yeah, France. Yeah, they've had it all their own way. <laughs> I, it doesn't feel to me like they've been under any kind of real pressure, duress or, or stress. Well, that French game, how can you say that? Because they, they, they did it quite easily, to be fair. It wasn't easy. The, the first half was absolute dynamite. Three points in it and it took... Mm. enormous sustained pressure that led to the ring rose try. That was it. They were with about six minutes to 74 go. 74 minutes. They need yeah. to lose, right? And the problem is with Leinster is if they're not losing in their Irish shirts, they're going to have to lose at some point. And they're not going to be losing in, in the URC. And that means they're going to lose in the knockout stages of the Champions Cup. Like they do every <laughs> single year. Right. Well, would you, if, if you had like a no, no microphones, it was just a private conversation. Caelan, come and sit down. Hugo, come sit down. Johnny, come sit down. Right. This has got nothing to do with the World Cup. This is just, you can have your fifth star or you can have a Grand Slam. You can't have both. I would have a fifth star. I would have a fifth star (laughs) every day of the week. Every day of the week. But, you know, if they want their Grand Slam, like, take it. I I just think winning the... If you're an international player, I think you've probably got more chance of winning Grand Slams than you have of winning the Heineken Cup. Do you think they'd trade both of those? So no fifth star, no Grand Slam. To just make it past the quarterfinals, <laughs> yes, just make not, not even a World Cup final. Yeah, no, just, just semi. semi. Get get panned by forty points in the semi, though. Get to the well. Semi. No, no, actually, I've I've had it all wrong on the on the semi finals. I thought that the I knew the draw was split, but they cross back over in the yeah, semi finals. Yeah, so oh. so whoever wins out of New Zealand, France, Ireland, South Africa, or potentially Scotland, whoever wins out of those four will play the winner of you would imagine England. Australia, Wales, Argentina. Yes. So, or Fiji. If Ireland, Japan. so getting past the quarterfinal will probably mean Ireland go and, could well go and win the World Cup. Maybe. Mm. Shit or bust, basically. Yeah. <laughs> quarterfinal it is then. Yeah. So we're all saying Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly. Yeah. Well, not sadly. It. Be- <laughs> it no, not sadly at all. But just it would. Yeah. It to make the last to make Super Saturday most interesting. From it a would new, be tasty. From a neutral perspective, that would be... Yeah, to have how many teams could win the tournament in the final weekend? If It depends what happens in England-France. Because whoever wins that will be will have only lost one. Yes. And then if Ireland lose to Scotland, then 
Ireland will have only so, lost So there one. will be at least... Scotland there, there, will have only so lost So the winner of England, one. France, Scotland uh, and Ireland could all win on the last day. If Ireland yeah. uh, lose, if Scotland wins. So for the good of ev- the good of the tournament, Ireland, you need to take one for the team here. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Last weekend, really interesting. The three teams could win it, basically. That would yeah. make it spicy. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Right, let's go home. <laughs> Perfect. Thank Let- God. Nice one.